Welcome back to another Cheer Yoga video with Mayor's Wellness Campaign. Uh, once again, I am Christina Chismar, Recreation Clerk, Admin Assistant for the Borough. And let's get started. We're not going to be really delving into anything specific today. Just kind of do a little bit of a class. Take with it what you will. Just stretching out your body, letting things go. So as usual, uh, make sure if you have not done so, consult with a physician. If something hurts, just ease your way out of it, find your edge, find whatever feels nice to you. And if it doesn't feel nice, don't do it. It's just yoga. Um, always make sure you have some water nearby. Um, make sure you're wearing some loose fitting clothing. I personally don't like to wear shoes when I do this. So whatever you're doing, let's take a seat, making sure that you're sitting hip width apart, retraining your body, remembering to learn that bigger stance to help yourself from falling as we get older. And in general at this point <laughs> so wherever you are if you'd like to have your back active go for it if you want to ease into your chair for now whatever feels good eyes closed if you like hands on your thighs palms up for receiving energy palms down for grounding depending on what you're needing today and just start coming into your breath taking those big inhales and exhaling it out Noticing that your breath has naturally slowed itself down as you come into your happy place. I always like to say is as you come into your mat, but in this case, as you come into your chair. Maybe sticking your tongue to the roof of your mouth to restrict your throat so you can make your breath more audible. If that has you pay attention to it more. This way you don't have to worry about accidentally forgetting to breathe. Because most people think that you have to hold your breath. Holding your breath, all you're doing is keeping that energy in. By exhaling, you're able to get deeper into the stretches. That's a big part of the yoga is the pranayama, the breathing part. That's when they tell you to breathe into a muscle. Same idea. <laughs> Wherever you are, open your eyes if you'd like. We'll start with some hip circles. So taking your hands to the side or testing your balance, keeping them on your thighs, and just making the hip circles as big or as little as you'd like, as long as you're keeping your sits bones down. You're just warming yourself up. Finding what feels good. Some in this direction, pause, reverse that circle. Last one. Back into your center. Taking over to our sides once again, trying not to ease yourself out, trying to just use your torso, taking your left hand, sliding it down the chair, maybe keeping it on it for support, just as long as you're not putting your neck into your shoulder. So I pull my hair back so you can see a little better. So dropping your head, drop, and if this feels good, this is it, this is awesome. Otherwise, if you want to bring your right arm up to the sky, maybe bring it over, just opening up that side body there just a little bit more. Don't forget, this is good too. Just whatever feels good. As long as you're keeping your neck out, your shoulders out of your neck. And dropping that arm back and coming into a sitting mountain pose. Inhaling, arm up, right arm down, left arm up. Same as before. If you want to take it over, go for it. Otherwise, this is good. Lifting your arm up, that is huge help. Dropping it on in, getting into our necks a little bit. Dropping your head down to your chest. Inhaling your way left or right, whatever feels good. Once again, letting your neck do the work. So you're not bringing your shoulder up to your ear, you bring your ear down to your shoulder. If it doesn't reach, perfectly fine. Exhale, bring it down through, inhaling back up, 
And if you like, you always have the option to go around, just being careful about how it or extend it. Once again, whatever feels good. Just if you've taken it this way down to your neck, toe to your chest, you're helping make your uh, back your neck just get to breathe. Sounds so. Good. And back up. And bring it down. And back up. And as you're doing this, you're working the front of it. So I like to put it, try to get rid of a little rooster from developing. Good job. Trying different little neck pose here. So taking your hands, we're going behind your back. You're going to interlace your fingers. Interlacing your fingers behind your back. If this is good, awesome. You can always just keep your arms back. If you want to try a little farther, try to bring your arms around so your hands are on the side. So this is actually a bit of a neck release here. So because you're stretching this arm out, so we're also getting into the shoulders, maybe looking over, in this case, the right shoulder because our right arm is pulled behind our back. Once again, if you feel a little pinch, if you feel any tearing or anything that doesn't feel right, get out of it. Just looking over. Once again, noticing my shoulders are not in my neck. This feeds the purpose. If you have your neck shoulders into your neck, your shoulders are supposed to help support your spine. Your neck is strong enough to carry your big bowling ball of a head. It should be fine getting some stretching in without the help of your shoulders. Letting it go. Maybe taking a reverse hold on those fingers. Looking around to the left, to the right side, the left arm stretch. Same as before. Stretching out to the neck to the other side. Helping support your spine. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And releasing it, arms all the way up. Doing it a little differently this way, so maybe bringing them halfway down. Once again, shoulders rolled into your spine, into your back, not up at your neck. See neck, spine. Getting yourself back, maybe taking some circles this way. Just doing it a little differently today, trying it out. Worst case is we go back to normal for the next time. This is a lot, so if it gets too much, it gets too heavy, you always have the option to bend your arms or bring them down. So I'm going to try bending them, go the other way. Just keeping them up a little bit higher, making sure as I'm circling my neck up, my shoulders up to my neck, I'm not squeezing it in, just bringing it around. And dropping it down. I'm getting into those wrists because most important, we type too much, we're on our phones too much, so I make sure you're always working on those fingers. So taking your right hand first, grabbing that pinky, Inhaling it, press it back. Don't force it, don't do anything. Just enjoy that stretch. Once again, arms staying up. And switch. Switch. And then keeping that left arm underneath as you grab that right thumb pinky closest to the palm. I had a friend in high school who could bend his thumb all the way back, really mm -hmm. left. That's my input for the day. Release it, go to the left hand, same as before, starting with that pinky. Releasing to the ring finger. Releasing to the middle finger. And next. And again, to the thumb, underneath, pinky closest to palm. Maybe shaking it out a little bit, going into all four fingers on the right hand, grabbing that thumb if it feels good, just working on the wrist a little bit by pressing everybody back. And flipping it. And releasing to the left, same as before, grabbing all four and thumb if you like to. I like all four. Oh, feels so good on the wrist. Flipping it over, all four. Maybe thumb. 
And release, shake it out. Arms up, again, making yourself into the Y and YMCA. And then diving forward, trying to just rest your torso on your thighs, bending in. Inhale, lift it halfway. Exhale, bending forward again, just enjoying that stretch. And lifting up, if you'd like to, spreading your legs out in front of you, taking a forward fold fully before we get into our legs a little bit more. So inhaling arms all the way up. Exhale, fold it in. Oh, it's stiff today. It's snowing out here. Hmm. Lifting back up. This time, lift, keeping your right foot up, keeping that left leg in. Maybe doing a hamstring stretch first. So maybe bending that left leg, keeping those left, right toes up, heel down, pressing into that right leg. Or not pressing in, just holding it. Up to you, depending on how much amount of pressure. By using your natural body weight as opposed to weights, I find my body gets more in tune to myself. But you always help, welcome to use weights. Oh. Right leg up to the sky, making ankle circles as big or as little as you like. I think next time I should wear colorful socks so you can see a little bit better. And reverse the circles. Again, hands on, keeping your spine straight. You don't want to slouch in. All that work you've just been doing on your whole body, up, keeping yourself nice up and level. Drop it down, same on the left. Extend that left foot out. Heel up, right foot all the way down, maybe pressing in to stretch into that hamstring. Up to you, take it wherever it feels good. If this is good, perfect. Lifting up, once again, making those circles as big or as little as you'd like. Oh, nice little crack in my whole ankle there. And reversing the circles. Drop it on in. Starting once again with the right foot, lifting it up, maybe grabbing it on the outside of your shin, hugging it in, or grabbing underneath the thigh. Just as long as you're hugging your leg in, this way you're also supporting your spine and ensuring your shoulders are in your back. Whatever feels good to you. And dropping it on in, lifting it up, left side this time, same as before. On the shin, underneath the thigh. And as long as you're keeping that back straight. By keeping that back straight, you're able to keep your balance. If you're getting sloppy, you're just holding yourself up. Sloppiness makes you fall. Not good. And lowering it down. One more time. Option, you can always skip this and say, hey, I'll watch her. You can, using your chair if you'd like. Try lifting your feet up. If you can get them on the chair, cool. If you can't, try just hugging them in. Shaking yourself into a little ball. If you feel like you got your balance, you still have your spine nice and straight, so you can extend your arms out. Totally advanced move. It's completely up to you. I'm just playing. This is fun. Lowering it down. Standing all the way up as we get into our squats, so doing, we'll only do five today. So lowering yourself down, making sure once again that your knees are not going over your toes, almost down to your seat and lift it up, squeezing in those glutes. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift it up. It's two. Lower it in. Up for three. Lower it down. Up for four. The last one, you know it's coming, holding it for five. Four, maybe extending your arms up. Three. Two, one, sit on down. Maybe taking a little bit more of a wider forward fold here if you'd like. Inhale, drop it. And back up. Standing to the back of your chair. 
Once again, not doing anything a little too crazy today. The one thing that I do like to do every time I can get a chance is to do our tree pose. But first, we will start with our mountain pose. So I want to make sure that we're playing around with our feet. We're also going to do a sun salutation as well. So when you're seated in mountain, once again, noticing that my legs are hip width apart. No. Yes. I need those big arrow signs. But wherever you are, chair is there for support. So in theory, if I kick this chair out right now, I'm not falling over. But noticing myself as straight. Spine is as straight as I can. Think of some military at ease, I guess. I don't want to. If you feel any strain in your lower back, you're pressing yourself forward too much. Everything's aligned. Think of it as a string of pearls. Pouring yourself up. And when you're ready, lift those toes. Once again, chair is there for support. Drop the toes, lift the heels. As high as you want. If this is, is it, it, awesome. If you feel like you're just going to fall forward, grab the chair. Don't do it. Lift the toes. Lift the heels. As high as you like, as low as you like. Getting into our tree pose again, using the chair as support. You always have the option to go behind it. Once again, I just want you to see me. Starting with your, this is going to feel weird. Starting with your right foot. Rooting all four corners of your foot in, enough to lift up your toes. Everything has to put enough weight into your right leg to lift up your left for the kickstand. Calf. Skip that knee. Go to side. Once again, whatever feels good. If this is too much, lower it down. There's nothing wrong with it. You might find out today you can do thigh, tomorrow you can't. Great thing about ourselves. And then once you have this, if you want to play with your balance a little bit, take your hand off the chair. Or take one hand off the chair. Up to you. Find your drifty gauge, your unmoving point. Don't look at me, I'm moving around. Look in front of yourself. Look down at the floor. I'll direct you as to where we're going here. And if this is it, awesome. If you can go a little farther, try growing your branches. Maybe make them wave in the wind. If you're really feeling advanced today, you could always close your eyes. I personally fall every time, so I'm not doing that. Lowering it down. And making sure not to slingshot, bring that leg down slowly but surely. Switching to the left, same as before, putting your weight into your left, moving into all four corners, spreading that foot out, enough to lift up your right. For the kickstand, calf, drop the knee, or thigh. Oh, I did something to my knee. This hurts. Not enough, though. This feels like it just needs to be stretched a little more. Once again, finding your uh, drifty gaze, that unmoving point. You may find out this side, you need the chair. Otherwise, playing around. Worst case is, you catch yourself, you go back on the chair. Hands to heart center. Focusing on that drifty gaze. If you start to feel wobbly, wobbly, think of yourself as a redwood rising up. Maybe extend your branches. Bring your hands back on there, taking the time. back down, lifting that right leg off of the left, slowly, slowly, slowly. So we set ourselves up for our flamingo. So once again, rooting into that right foot, taking turns so we don't put all the weight in the knee. Lift that left foot back behind you, even if it's just an inch or all the way. If you can, grab it. If you can't, cool. This is it. Perfect. Once again, finding what feels good. All the way down again, slowly but surely, that's the inner strength, right side, sorry, left side, rooting into that left foot, reach up for the right, maybe grab it, nice crack on my knee, yay, so good. Finding that spot. 
It's like investigating really important. You can always extend yourselves out, do whatever feels good. I just like how this feels on the front of my thigh. Noticing. Not bringing it, not bringing it forward. I'm trying to pull it back to keep myself as straight as I can. Ooh, lowering it down slowly, not like that. So we've done our sun salutation sitting down. Just to give you an example of a standing sun salutation. If it feels uncomfortable, you can just watch me with popcorn and think I'm hilarious. So just reaching forward on your chair. A nice flat back. Shoulders into your back. Inhale, rise up. Big toe, again, onto those toes. If this is too much, you don't have to do it. Just even just angling yourself, go for it. Just find what feels good. If this is feeling really good, advance. Try dropping your belly in. Try to keep those arms into your back. Oh, this is fun. And back through. And if you want to, try it again. Finding what feels good. Even if it's just this, to press back. Or that shaky feeling you get, as long as it's not a danger, danger, danger shaky, this is just your body working muscles it's not used to. Once again, whatever feels good. Have a seat, you did a lot. <sighs> Almost done here. So first, before we are going to do our shoulder dips and everything else, but before we do our shoulder dips, we'll start with our right leg. Just keep it extended. Straighten that left leg out as best you can. You're coming to the edge of your chair. Maybe bring your right leg out to the side a little bit. Just stretching into your quad. Just feeling that release. Hopefully it feels nice. Maybe extending out to your knee is not over your ankle. Because that's always a pet peeve of mine. And if it feels good, see if you can take it a little farther. Go into a side angle. Right arm, in this case, on my right thigh, left arm up overhead. Once again, noticing how my neck is. Bad. Good. Finding what feels right. Side angle pose. As you get more comfortable and gain more strength, you can always try dropping down. But even just this action, it feels so nice. Coming back in, resetting yourself. Wide legged. So by the way, it can be temple pose. Arms up to the sky, temple pose. So it's like goddess pose, but seated. Now, same as before, doing our right, our left side now. Extending right leg out behind you into a lunge. Feels good. Enjoying it. Feeling nice. And then once again, if it feels appropriate to you, this needs to go a little farther. You're enjoying the stretch. It feels great. Side angle. Long, beautiful necks. Arm all the way up to the sky if you like looking under that armpit. By looking under your armpit, you're opening your chest up more. You're opening up your heart chakra. Opening your chest. It's also a bit of a back, a little tiny, small bit of a back bend. So once again, you're getting into your spine because you're also keeping it straight. It's just an active pose and it feels so good. Any variation. Once again, standing. That would have been funny. Just going like that. I kind of like how it feels sitting. I'm going to do this when I get back to my office. Back on up. Whew. Shoulder dips. So once again, legs spread out. Fingertips on the inside of your thighs. We're going to do four sets. Just because it's a fun number. So starting, I like to do right shoulder first. So right shoulder looking to the left. Dropping it. Oh, lifting it up, dropping, looking over that right shoulder, drop, looking over that left shoulder, drop, that's two, and drop for three, drop it in, last one, make it nice and strong. Feeling good. <laughs> so bring it down a little bit. Um, I do like to do our hips a little bit more because once again seated. So 
We'll be taking a forward fold stretch first as we before we get into our eagle. And taking the right leg over your left to start because why not? It's fun. Or left over right, whatever feels good. Getting what feels nice. So this time around, apparently I can do a double. Once again, as long as you're squeezing it enough, you will eventually, as you get more comfortable with it and your motion and your muscles get used to it and you're able to tighten it more, getting those P legs in, as I like to say, so you're holding in your P, you will feel it more into your lower back. I'm really happy that I got the double, so I'm gonna keep it like this. Arms up. And we'll take, because I got right leg on top. So bring right arm in, swing left arm underneath for the high five. Or bear hug. Once again, as long as your shoulders are up, hug it in. Just squeezing it in. You should feel this in the upper back as well. Once again, you can always hold these poses longer if you like. Unrounding your legs enough to come into a figure four. Right ankle on top of left thigh. This is good. Awesome. You want to take a little farther. Big inhale. Exhale. Try draping your torso over your leg. Don't worry. Your leg will catch you. And then if you can, you can extend your leg arms down. Extending arms down just puts more pressure on you. Natural pressure to get you deeper into the stretch on your hip. Once again, if it starts to hurt, cat. Try and keep, try to spread your leg out as best you can. If you can't get it over the ankle, don't worry about it. But I'd rather have just a little bit of an opening. In theory, you should be able to put your arm through your legs. So keeping that cross isn't doing yourself any favors. And let's bring it back in. Starting it to the left side. So left leg over right. This one's a little harder, but I'm really proud of myself, so I'm going to keep holding on to that. So squeezing in, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Once again, if you can't do that, don't worry. I just realized today I can do it. Crossing at the ankles, crossing at the thighs, whatever feels good. As long as you can start feeling it in your lower back, you squeeze, squeeze, squeeze those legs in. Arms cactus. Left arm in this time, right arm swings underneath for the high five. Or the bear hug. As long as you feel it in your upper body. Giving yourself some love and care here. <sighs> Releasing those arms. Taking that figure four, once again, finding where it feels good. You might find this side a little easier. I got all kinds of stuff going on on my right leg to this year. So it <laughs> feels like my left is able to extend more. So once again, if this is it, you did it. Otherwise, a big inhale, exhale, fold in, fold it down. Give yourself the break. Give yourself the pressure. Once again, I don't care how far you go, as long as in theory you can stick your light hand between your arms. Now, stick your arm between your legs. I was getting there eventually. I'm funnier in real life. I'm sorry, I could stay in pigeon all day, but I'm not going to because I have to do stuff. <laughs> so taking your time, easing your way up. <sighs> Relax, feel good about yourself. I do want to do one little back bend here, a little fake bridge, fake wheel. So putting yourself against your back. If this is too much, you can always put your hands in the little joints and just try to press back. Otherwise, if you want to take your arms to the outside of the chair, Press it back, just dropping your head. If it feels good, if it's too much, don't drop your head. If you start feeling the strain, I always feel like right here, where my ears go down. I don't even know what position that is. You just ease your back. Maybe interlacing your fingers, falling it back. And if you interlaced, make sure you switch it. You'd be surprised at that little subtleness. 
how much more can be redeveloped, remastered, rediscovered. You find out you have all kinds of funky, different muscles you never think to work. That's when you get that shaking. It's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing if you're like, uh, this is no, it's making me dizzy, it's making me nauseous. Otherwise, it's muscles going, oh, wait, we have to do stuff now. Whenever you can release, maybe hugging yourself in, really squeezing, rolling those shoulders. And doing whatever little last minute thing you need to do if you want to take a little twist. Or whatever it may be. Whenever you're ready, easing yourself back onto the chair, relaxing, closing your eyes, letting it all go, giving your body a chance to relax, respond, and start conditioning itself into the muscle work that we have done today to help grow your muscles. You always want to give yourself that rest. So just staying here as long as you'd like. Eyes closed if you want. Letting go of your breath, letting go of everything that did or did not happen here or off your chair. Whenever you take your time, you stay here as long as you like. But when you're ready, just reach your arms up over your head. Taking a full body stretch. Taking a nice big inhale. And exhaling out of mouth. <sighs> you like bringing your hands to heart center. Bowing down to yourself. For coming to join me again. Lighten me on, there's light in you. Namaste.